Welcome to the first lesson of Coding Better Composables. I'm Greg Pollack, and what we're going to jump into in this lesson is the why and the what of composables, make sure we all understand why we need them. We'll look at implementing a composable from scratch. Then we'll look at the parameter options that we might use to compose composable, meaning the different arguments that we're going to send in. Then we'll look at the use title and use ref history composables from the view use library and see a little bit about how they're implemented. When coding up view, there's lots of times that I've run into having duplicate code in multiple components. And when that happens, we have a few options of how to deal with that. First, we can extract that code into another component or a mixin or a JavaScript function or a scope slot. And now with U3, we can extract that code into a composable. But what is that exactly? Well, a composable is a function that leverages the view composition API to encapsulate and reuse stateful logic. If you're not yet familiar with the composition API, or you want to learn the advantages of composables and the disadvantages of some of those other ways we can reuse code, check out the View 3 Composition API course here on View Mastery. Let's build our first composable. This will be inside a folder we create in our source directory called composables. The file here is mouse.js. First, we'll import some functions from view that we'll use inside of our composable. We'll call our composable use mouse, and we'll start by declaring two refs, an X and a Y, where we'll store our mouse coordinates. At the bottom of this function, we'll call the onmounted and unmounted hooks adding and removing the event listener for mouse move. And when the mouse moves, we'll call the update function, which we'll declare here. As you can see, this simply sets the X value and Y value based on where the mouse is. Lastly, we'll return the X and Y ref because we'll want to use it inside of our component. Now that we have this composable, let's look at how we might use this inside of a component. Here inside of our app.view, we have our script setup method, and first we import use mouse from composables slash mouse. Then we'll call this function and return the x and y, which we'll store in two constants. Then inside of our template, we'll print out x and y. If we jump into our browser, we'll see that it's properly using this composable to display our mouse position. We can now reuse this composable in multiple components. Before we move on, I want you to notice that the use mouse composable doesn't have any arguments. And many of our composables will want to take arguments to customize them. So how might we do that? Specifically, how should we create composable inputs? Well, the first option we have is to create an argument for each property. For instance, here, if we have a use title composable, we might send in product page true and then my sock store. Don't worry about what these arguments mean yet. We'll get to that a little bit later. Or we could simply send in one big options argument, like you see here. The benefits of using an options argument mean I don't have to remember the correct ordering of the arguments. It's a little easier to see what each option does because it has the name there. And it's easier to add new options because I can simply add a new property to the object. Or I can use both an argument here and an options argument. A good convention here is to have required arguments first and optional arguments inside the options object. If this was our function call though, what would be a best practice for parsing out these options? Here you see me using destructuring. This allows me to specify defaults for these properties unless they were sent in using the options object like we did in our function call. The use title composable is just one of many composables you'll find inside the view use library, which is a collection of essential view composition utilities. If we looked at the documentation here, we would find the use title composable and it would give us a demo and the usage of how to use it inside of our view application. If we take a closer look, we can see the usage. We can declare a title, print out the current title, or set the current title. And on the bottom here, you can see how we can set the initial title immediately. Let's take a look at how easy it is to use a view use composable. First, we need to install the library inside of our view project. Then inside of a component, we simply import the composable that we want from view use core. 
then we can simply use it as you see here. We're sending in green socks as our page title and our title template with my store. This would show us a page title of green socks my store, like you see here. If we wanted to play with this composable, we could create an input which binds to title. Then, as you see here, we can change the input and the title gets updated in real time. There's one other composable I want to show you called Use Ref History. This allows us to track the history of a ref to get redo and undo functionality. Let me show you an example. Here, we'll import it from View Use. Then, if we create a ref called Count, we can then call Use Ref History and send in that ref, returning the undo function. Then if we increment the value, if we print it out, we get one. And if we call undo and then print it out again, we get zero, properly setting it to the previous value. Just like use title, use ref history takes one required argument followed by an options object. So here, if we have a state, which is a ref with an object, we can call use ref history, send in that state, and then specify an options object sending in deep true, which tracks the changes inside of arrays and object, which is useful in this case, and capacity, which limits how many steps we track, how many steps we can undo. If we then look inside the use ref history definition inside the view use library, we'll see that it uses destructuring here, and there is our deep option with its default. You might notice that the capacity option doesn't have a default, and if you looked in this function definition, it doesn't even exist anywhere here. Hmm, so why is that? Well, if you look deeper into the code, you would notice that further down in use ref history, this composable calls another composable use manual ref history and sends forward the options into the next composable using the destructuring dot 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 syntax. And this is where the capacity option is used. So when you have two composables that have similar code, it's not uncommon to extract that logic into yet another composable. Let's review. In this lesson, we learned about when to use composables. We implemented our first composable with that use mouse composable. We then looked at the different parameter options when we're building composables and how to destructure the options. Then we looked at the use title and use ref history composables from the view use library, which I recommend you take a look at if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome back to Coding Better Composables. In this lesson, we'll be looking at flexible arguments. First off, we'll look at why we might need flexible arguments and what that means exactly, how to use them, and then we'll look at two examples of composables from the view use library that use this pattern. First, use title, and then use CSS ver. Almost all composables receive inputs. Some can receive either a ref, like you see here with the use title composable. This should look familiar from the last lesson. We can also call this composable using a string, like you see here. But notice the second line of code here, we call title.value equals, huh? That looks like use title took this string and it returned a ref. Hmm, interesting. So this composable has flexible arguments in that it can receive a string or a ref. How might we implement this in our own composables? Well, if we need a ref inside our use my composable composable, we can take the input and declare a ref with that input. In this case, if the input's already a ref, it's going to return a ref. Otherwise, it will wrap that primitive in our ref. If we need a primitive inside of our composable, we can use the unref function. In this case, if our input's already a primitive, it returns a primitive. And of course, if it's a ref, it returns the primitive inside the ref. As we saw earlier, with use title, we can use a ref or we can use a primitive. I wonder how this is implemented inside the view use source code. Let's take a look. If we looked inside the source, we would see something that looks like this. As you can see, it's calling ref on our new title input. Hmm, but what are all these question marks here? Well, this is the nullish coalescing operator from JavaScript. This isn't view, this is just JavaScript. 
And if the value on the left of the two question marks is null or undefined, it's going to use the value on the right. So it will return new title unless it's null or undefined. Otherwise, it'll return this unless it's null or undefined. Otherwise, it will return null. And in case you're wondering what that document question mark title is, well, that's the optional chaining operator in JavaScript. And so if a document is defined, it'll call that title. Otherwise, it'll return undefined. Before we move on, I want to show you what the true function definition of use title looks like. It looks a little more like this, where new title is of type maybe ref. This is TypeScript. And if we look up maybe ref in our source code, this is how it's defined. This is using something called TypeScript generics to ensure the value is either a ref, string, null, or undefined. If you haven't seen this before, don't be too intimidated. TypeScript is pretty simple. Now let's move on to another view use composable. This time we'll look at use CSS var. This allows us to use a CSS variable inside of our view code. And it expects a string, like you see here, but it also accepts a ref. Let's take a look inside the source, which needs a string, not a ref. So sure enough, inside use CSS var, which also uses that maybe ref type, we'll find an unref prop. So if it's a ref or a string, it will return a string. In this lesson, we looked at a way we can make our composables more flexible by using flexible arguments. Inside of our composable code, we can use ref or unref, depending on if we want a ref or a primitive. And then we looked at use title and use CSS var from the ViewUse library and how they implement flexible arguments. Thanks for watching.